Hello, my name is Mark, and these are my Dice Tales, and today I'm returning to Elder Scrolls Call to Arms Skyrim. They've just released a PDF update of a new Wilderness and Crypts dungeon delve. I've got a bit to talk about to say how to set it up. I've literally spent the weekend crafting a tiny table. I've gone to 15 mil using my 15 mil models, so I'm not using Modifius' models, so if you're here to see them, I'm sorry. But we are playing with all the Modifius cards tokens and everything else that's official but let's get to it what is into the dark it's a solo cooperative expansion and it's a new way to do mini quests um, and it looks more exciting than the what about six was it that was in the core set i'm going to show you the table i'm going to spin the camera around and show you what i've got here we go so this is my table we'll get to it in more detail in just a moment but ultimately you choose whether you're doing a crypt or a wilderness if you want to do a mini adventure string together a bit of a campaign it does suggest play out a little wild, uh, wilderness delve and then a crypt delve as if you've just come across a dungeon in the wilderness as you were wandering around as you do in Skyrim. You choose your theme, crypt or wilderness, you then choose an end goal so there's a table, you roll a black dice and that determines what your end goal was. For this setup that I've got here the dice determined destroy the layer. Then you choose an ultimate guardian now the pack comes with a couple of new enemies. My ultimate guardian, guardian turned out to be a frost troll, which is a new animal from the pack. And it's print and play, make your own cards up. Uh, so that's just printed out and put in a sleeve. The other animals are wolf, spider, skeever, which is a rat, bear, troll, and I forget the other one, stickleback, spikyback, something, bristleback, something like that. I don't know what one is, I don't remember seeing them in the game to be honest. Uh, and then ice versions of some of those, ice troll, ice bear, frost spider, giant frost spider, ice wolf, I think that covers it, it's sort of a dozen or so anim uh, animals there. Once you've chosen an ultimate guardian, you then choose how many mini maps you're going to play. I rolled a dice and I chose that this little adventure that I'm going to be playing in is three maps, and then I determine the size of each map. So I determined that my first map is two tiles large, as you can see here, I'm just going to change to my other view. So this is made up of two tiles, so you can see the defining point there. Uh, I've tried to do a little bit of a raised walkway, then a collapse, then the rest of the raised walkway, and a well room. This will be my first room in the crypt. There are walls in there, I need to add a splash of colour. Uh, it's literally only undercoats and dry brush, but there we go. Um, so that's two tiles wide, and uh, so you can imagine that you could just be playing on one tile and to a maximum of four tiles. That's one of my blank tiles in the background. And then I can populate it with all my little bits of scatter, as you can see. So I need to make more tiles. I need to make wilderness tiles. And each tile should be one foot or 12 inches. Because I'm playing in 15 mil scale, I've literally just reduced that by 60%. And that for me works out as 18 centimeters. So each of these tiles is an 18 centimeter square. Now the difference between wilderness and crypts, well this is just a just slightly smaller. When you determine how large it is, you roll a yellow dice and that can either come up with a one or a two. When you're doing a crypt, you roll two yellow dice, so that can be anywhere from two to four. Rerolling blanks, because we're blanks. The game is the same as the core rules in that you play with an adversary limit of up to 150. And again, that's determined by the number of tiles. So if you're just playing on one tile, your adversary Septim limit, gold limit, would be equal to whatever you've spent on your team. Two tiles like what I'm playing on, the septim limit is 10% more. So because I'm playing 100 septim, of sort of 98, I'm just going to call it 100, then my enemies in this game are going to add up to 110 septims. Three tiles, it's 125. Four tiles, it's the full 150. Also, when you're doing quests, there are literally only four quests, I think, in the core set. I didn't pick up the expansion pack yet. With the quests, uh, you only choose the ones with the Link and the 1X. Uh, the rest aren't used in this particular setup. So these are all the sort of fairly easy kill or find a treasure sorts of missions, quests. When the enemies spawn, so here it says spawn one, spawn one, spawn two. On the smaller tiles, if it's a one or a two tile dungeon, reduce that to one. So mostly you're only going to be spawning one enemy a turn, so you don't get bogged down. When you start the table, so I've got three treasure tokens on the table that you can see. Uh, there is a map that shows you that the treasures start on that side of the board. 
and the enemies can spawn from this wall or that wall um, so I'm going to say they're either going to come on on the balcony and walk down or they're going to come on through this door here technically they can come on anywhere on that side you know come through a gap in the wall but I have put doors areas on my walls to try and make them link up and look a bit nicer what else do we need to know so we've done the spawning number of turns depending on how many tiles your dungeon your chamber is made up of one tile you have six turns to accomplish your objective two and three tiles like this it's eight turns so I've got an eight-sided dice reminding me of my turns and four tiles it's ten turns when you generate a chamber so I'm gonna to have to go through three of these but I, I then rolled a black dice which determined the objective and this objective was a puzzle door. I'll, I need to get through the puzzle door at the end. So I don't really have a puzzle door at the moment, so I'm just going to have that little bit of rubble. The mission, the objective of the puzzle door is search the treasure to find any bony claw. Once you've got the claw, you can go through the door. That's it. That is it, I think. We've covered everything. Final thing is, when you so you can see that I've got an empty tile over there. Uh, there is a little bit of a suggestion for terrain in the book. It's not great, it's not going to too much detail. If it says roll a yellow dice and that determines whether you've got sort of two to seven points of terrain and then it gives you a list on what what it suggests terrain is based on the terrain that you can actually buy from Modiphius like how many eight inch walls and such like that uh, but ultimately you know make it look nice make it look like a dungeon make it look like it's uh, was there for a purpose so I think I've got that, so I've got this weird walkway, I've got a well room, I've got a little bit of a zigzag to get through. So I think we I think we got that nailed. That's it, let's get to the game. I haven't played for a while, but I'm all set up. So I've got my adventurer, my little Robin Hood character there. We've got a Drago Swordsman, another Drago Swordsman, and a Skeleton Archer. The rest of the pool is two Skeevers, a Swordsman and an Archer. Uh, here are all my tokens are set up. I'm a Dragonborn and I've got a bow, a shield, a portion of minor healing and some light armour. We're not going to see the Frost Troll in this game, so we're just going to have Skeevers, Swordsmen and Skeletons. Let's see how this plays out and how much I can remember. Uh, so I need to draw a quest and you will get one quest per chamber and I've got Fetch Me That Book. If you're feeling adventurous, I'm always looking for someone to pursue procure valuable books. For some more date from some more dangerous locations at least three treasure tokens yes we've got that each time your model searches a treasure token or a control or an objective make an intelligence test to search for the book and that can give me one victory point there are oaths and boasts and i'm just going to say i'm going to try and do all of them i think one of them is is, is complete a chamber without being damaged kill all the adversaries do a melee attack on the big bad Frost Troll at the end, I think something like that. Okay, so I'm going to start, I'm going to say that I took the initiative and I'm going to be coming into this dungeon out of my bow. I was very much a, much a Breton archer in the game, so I think I'm depicting that well. So you get two actions, let's remember that. You can move six inches and you can spend stamina to boost that. So in my small scale, I'm going to run up these stairs, even though there's no objectives up there. I wanted to get eyeline of a bow down to Draugr Swordsman. You can just see his sword sticking up behind that wall. And my second action, I'm going to shoot. So let's see what dice we need. So the dice is two yellow, green. Well, it depends on the range. Now, I think we're going to be short ranges. It's 10 inches. Easy peasy short range. So, yeah, two yellow and a green. Now, does my Banish the Wicked apply to this? Adds a yellow dice to all attacks performed against models of Daedra Undead Vampire. I don't see why not. I'm going to add another yellow to that. And I'm going to spend a stamina to give me another accuracy dice. So I'm using three yellow, two green, and then the white dice. Let's see if we can shoot from up there down to that wall and take out a drag. And I have rolled. And you need to roll under the stats on your card. So my card says my agility is four. I've rolled a three, which is under it. And then I've got these modifiers to make it even lower. And wow, four damage to the Draugr. Uh, he has an armor rating. Let's check his card. Of oh, a yellow cap. Blank. Pachoom. Send him back to his pool. So he's number one. Place him there. We're taking one out. That is actually a victory point as well. So you gauge how well you've done by having over six experience 
I think that's after all three chambers. So that's doing, yeah, that, that, that seems easy enough. But then a outstanding victory is over 11 victory points. And obviously not fulfilling a boast might reduce that. So it seems very doable to get in, in a sort of an average adventure, but I don't know how difficult it will be to get an outstanding. So I've done two actions. I've taken out Draugr. Let's play the enemies. None of them were in within, they, remember they activate when they're in within six, so none of them, even the one down there. So I've been sneaky stealthy, doing them at range. Let's draw a token for the enemies, see which one's going to activate. Number two, number two is the closest one here. And then you roll a black dice, consult his AI card, and that is attack, because he is a mite. Now I believe they sprint, which gives him an extra three. Heard the clatter of bones, and he's going to come and investigate, and wander around the tiles there. I love the 15 mil that this can literally fit in the shelf. I can put it on a high up shelf and get it down whenever I, I like. I mean, obviously it looks better, 28 mil, but you need space for that. Uh, cool. So he's going to move, and that's it. They just have one activation. Then we flip the. Before we do that, we then have an event. And the event is Divine Inspiration. Choose one of your models. That model may reroll a number of dice from its next skill or attribute test. Try and put that there. I'm sure I'll forget that. Then we flip it to the enemy's turn, and the enemy is then going to take all its enemy tokens back. There's only a two and a three on the board. Why have I got so many tokens out? So it's going to be between a two and a... Th oh, spawn an enemy. Uh, so this said spawn two enemies. Because it's two tiles, you only spawn one. And that's a skeever. So number four is coming onto the board in there. And 50-50, one, two, three by the door. Four, five, six. One, two, three by the door. So a little skeever. Heard the rattling of bones, coming to investigate, brave little fella. Then we go to the enemy's turn. Now we've got three enemies on the board, so we shuffle up the tokens and see which one's going to activate. And number three. So you're number two, just trying to remember myself. Catch myself up. So number three is going to activate. That is the skeleton archer. Ooh, can he see me? That's an interesting one. Technically he's behind the barrels, maybe he can't see me at the moment, but he will certainly move and shoot. And I reckon he's going to, uh, you know, roll the dice, see what he's going to do. Three, that's an attack, shadow. Oh no, it's a move. It's, um, they hide, don't they, the weird skeletons. I've always, this probably what bugged me most about the game. So he's going to go behind the barrels, get get a little bit defensive behind the barrels, because he's literally as far as away as he can get. Let me just double check that AI in the book. I'm going to play, I just don't like skeleton AI. I, it just bugs the hell at me. He's going to move to that parapet and shoot me. That's what a skeleton would do. Really, really bugs me that AI. That's why I shelled the game. <laughs> anyway, it's good to see it out again. Uh, so skeleton archer. Just two yellow dice because I think that's going to be long range compared to that was a short range earlier on. Bam. And he needs to roll under three. He's got three and he's done one damage. Uh, cover. So I'm behind a wall, a bit of a parapet myself. I think that just gives you an extra, boom, an extra yellow. So I blocked that easily. Fine. That's the enemy's activations. Back to me on the player's turn. Right. I'm going to shoot from up here. So I've got my stamina back. A green. I'll shoot the Draugr down there. I'll increase my accuracy again. I don't want to miss. Spend that stamina. To give me a green dice. And shoot. So seven would be a miss. But minus two. Minus one gets me below four. And I've done two damage with... Does that pierce or anything? It gives me piercing at short range, so yeah, I've hit. He's going to have a yellow dice in defence. He's blocked one, but I pierced it, so another Draugr dead. Another victory point for Team Hero. And that was one movement. So I need to get on, and this is turn two, remember. And I've only got, what was it, eight turns. So I'm going to move. Should I just go downstairs? I was thinking I want to do a bit more heroics, jump off this and get down there, but Skeevers are fast, they're fleet, so that's going to run right round and get me. If I go down the stairs, I might have a bit more of a chance. And I'm going to spend another stamina just to get a little bit of a boost. So that's going to get me down to there. I am in skeever range. I'm not in activation range, but I am in skeever range. So I have shot a move on my turn. Now it is an event. Secret pass. Choose a friendly model that isn't staggered or incapacitated. That model may, may illegally move up to six, ignoring terrain and other models. It may not end in contact with an enemy. So I can move six inches. That's nice. I shall take that. That's going to move me right up to that treasure token. Right up to that skeever, but right up to that treasure token. Uh, that doesn't count as an activation, does it? 
It is a move. Go on, I'll give you an activation. So that Skeever, because I've moved, is going to attack me. And the Skeever has a green and a red dice. And then a white dice. I'll roll a dice for its activations. Let's roll a sword. So a beast and a sword. Fall back. Oh, he's not going to attack me. So they do like ganging up in packs, so maybe he's falling back for that reason. Um, not far, not very far for you to move though, here. Yeah? Uh, he sees a, an adventure come through a tunnel and pegs it off, pegs it off to the stairs. Yeah, well that's the end of the enemy's turn, that was the events. Us spawn an enemy as well. So we've got one, two, three, four, five enemies. Number two, and that's another swordsman. And again, one, two, three, four, the door. Four, it's coming out of the door. Out of the crypt. Another Draugr rises and comes into the play. Shuffle up the enemy tokens. Okay, where were we? We were. Draugr's come on, one activated. I think this, the archer should have done something. So the archer can't see me, so it is gonna move. I'm just gonna ignore the AI of it. Then we'll get him down halfway down the stairs. Can't see me because of the angle of the walls and such. Da -da -da. Then it's back to player, so it's me. I'm by a treasure token, so I'm going to search because I'm a treasure hunter. I get two treasures. So I've got a family heirloom and the bony claw. Take the top three cards of the treasure set, quest item, whatever. Uh, okay, so I've got the bony claw, I've got the objective, I've searched this token. That's one action. And my quest for another victory point is do an attribute test to find the book. Intelligence. My intelligence is three, six. So no, I've not found a book on that treasure token. Uh, my next action, I've actually still got my bow out. So I'm going to take a shot at that Draugr right in front of me. So it's definitely short range. I've got stamina back. I'm going to spend that stamina for accuracy. Let's take him out. Don't miss. Plenty. Three damage. I don't think you can block it. Nope, another one bites the dust. Three victory points from killing three Draugr. Found the objective and that'll be a fairly swift mission. We're just going to go and leg it to the door and get out. We could try and complete the quest of the book, um, but I think we will round it up, double check the rules. I think we did it all, all okay to be honest. Uh, so that's a player. I searched and shot. The enemy's going to activate, so we've got two enemies on the board. Number three and number four. Three, four, give them a shuffle. Draw a token. Number four, that's the Skeever. Roll a dice to see what Skeever's going to do. That's an attack this time. And I think he still might be in range. So it's leaping out. Got a bloodlust. And it uses a red and a green. X, it's missed. But it has regained its stamina. <laughs> Lovely. That is the enemy's activation. Now we flip the, now we do an event. Uh, ancient Riddles, place a portal objective in the gaming area, no closer than 8 inches to any player controlled model. If possible, place it as far away as possible, otherwise spawn one enemy. I could get a puzzle token out, 8 inches away, I could put it by the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, da -da -da, what am I doing? Placing the puzzle down, spawning an enemy. It's an archer, and the archer's coming on, on the parapets, on the balcony. Now it's the enemy's turn, we've got three enemies on the board, two archers, so your number of shuffle up those three tokens, see which one it is. And it is number five, a new entry, so he's just going to follow his chappy sprint downstairs, and he's in the doorway. So far so good, I think. That was the enemy's activation, there's only one activation, back to the player. Player has a bow and he is in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Can I shoot a bow in hand-to-hand -hand combat? It's clunky rules, it generally does cover everything. Not be engaged with an enemy. Does that mean I have to use my fists? Just do it unarmed. I don't really want to spend a turn swapping swords. <laughs> I should probably sw switch to the sword at this point. Right, spend an action, pull out my sword, whack him. Uh, gain a stamina back, use the stamina to increase my accuracy. Uh, crits! Crit, crit, crit. Let's just poof him off the board. What is the defense of a skeever? Does a crit do double damage? I forget what, uh, what that symbol means there. Yeah, I had a black dice. I had a black dice. Where is the black die? Whoa, plenty of damage. Can't block that. Skeever dead. Another victory point. So we're already on four victory points in the first rune. And that was the player's turn in the enemy phase. Draw an event. Seems to be, um, gosh, what turn are we up to? Three, I think we're getting on to four. Fast game, not. Maybe my next chamber will be more concise. Disease, choose one of your models. That must pass an endurance test. Well, we got the one. Filthy little rat. Critical fail. Receive a 
disease diminishing effects. Lovely. Right. Next, what is going to happen? Then it flips to player turn, and that does spawn another enemy. Number four, another archer. Oh no, that's a swordsman. Number two is going to come in in the doorway. Now it is the player's turn player, and I think it's turn four. Mm. I'm literally going to run past, I think. I'm just going to go to the door and finish. I can just get there on a move, run past the well, up to the doorway, touch the doorway, that ends the chamber. And all the enemies run away because I find a safe alpha clove, save the game ready to reload here for next turn and I'll take the board away I'll roll a dice for treasure there's a little bit of a after chamber page on the PDF so I didn't find my book so I literally only got four victory points there draw a master treasure or gain two VP master treasure eh? sure let's draw a master treasure master treasure the Galdor amulet attachment restore one point of health stamina or magic at the start of each activation that's fantastic wow okay so that could have been draw a treasure card but discard an upgrade from the party that could have been draw a treasure card and just give it to someone draw two treasure cards or gain one vp draw a massive treasure or gain one pp so i got the best result there then we rest all party members restore one point in each pool so i actually go back up to three stamina as uh, not an issue and prepare you may use a single consumable or cast one spell with a duration so that you start that the next dungeon with that clear away the current chamber including the any remaining adversaries no xp no xp again for that generate the next chamber so this can be a swift game and you can probably get three chambers in in one sitting it can vary top in depending on your uh, train so i'm going to show you that i'm going to show you how modular my little system is Take out all these bits, all the multi levels. Ah, there's my tokens, the hiding. And so I could have a more. Let's get rid of the well this time. I could say I come down from some stairs, and that could be my starting point. Um, it could be more of a corridor with columns and such. Maybe the middle column has breakage in it like that so I have to go through one of these areas that'll be lots of cover and I could have more walls I could have a jail cell maybe and that's it uh, I could rejig the adversary pool at this point um, I've actually already gone ahead what was this one? This one's going to be a lever puzzle. So I think you would put down three tokens with one, two or three underneath them. Basically I need to go over to them and once I know which number they are, so they'll be face down first of all, and then once I know what number they are, I then have to activate them in order to open the door to the next chamber. And that is it. That is how the game crumbles. So maybe there's a bit of uh, crashing the doors I can open and close by just by putting little bits of uh, terrain into them. Yeah, that looks good for the next chamber, really. Um, good to go. But I'm going to round up the video there. Just a quick introduction. Showing off my terrain and getting back into Skyrim. See, yeah, see how it plays. That wasn't too hard. Um, skeleton AI always bug me, will always bug me. I don't think there's anything we can do about that unless you can explain it in the comments below. Thank you very much. We'll see you. We'll see if I can record the next chamber and then the final chamber when we fight a frost troll. Maybe see if we can bring in some spiders and such like that. Think of a theme. And look at the Civil War. See what extra cards they have to spice up the enemy pool. Okay, that's it. That's Mark's Dice Tales. Playing Cold Swarm Skyrim. Into the Dark, the new expansion. That's a PDF that you can get from Modifius's website. See you later, goodbye.